Cheers, Owen. Hi, Thomas. You okay? How are you doing? Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so first of all, um, you're now going to be fighting in, in front of a, a crowd after a very long time. Um, how, how are you prepared for that? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, you definitely looking, that forward you to, looking forward to being back out and fighting and uh, definitely in front of a crowd, especially a home crowd. Um, should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Good stuff. And, and what do you know about your opponent so far? Um, nothing, nothing much. Um, to be honest, I don't like most of my opponents. Like always, I don't really look at them. Me, me trainer Neil Fallon, he, he looks at them, he goes through them, comes up with the tactics, and I just get in there and do my thing. Um, so I know he's a Mexican, so you know what you get with a Mexican. They're tough. They can fight. They like the fight. You know, I think they're sort of bred for fighting. So you're in for a hard night. So I'm expecting a good fight. In regards to titles in, in on the world scene. Um, is that something that you're going to be itching for this year? Are you looking at maybe next year now? Because you've, you've got a very impressive record, haven't you, as well? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll take any fight out there. So, you know, just it's, it's all to my management team, MTK, see what they, they've got planned for me. Obviously, I, I, I think they had a plan for a title fight this time around, but things didn't go as planned. So, um, we'll see how it goes but yeah I'll get me one step forward to, to where I need to be and we'll be challenging for, for the titles hopefully I've ended this year or maybe next year like I said we'll just see what, the, what they've got planned for me and see what comes and uh, Eddie obviously moving all the uh, the British fighters over to uh, the zone now um, big massive platform and, and getting your name out there as well uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah I think it's um, obviously it's a big thing uh, obviously with the, 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 the zone yeah, um, I think a few more fights can possibly possibly be made as well then for the fighters overseas and, and us. So, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see what, what comes of that. So it's exciting times. Brilliant. Thomas, all the best, mate, from the Boxing Voice and uh, best of luck on Saturday night. Thank you very much. Cheers. Uh, okay, if you go to James Lupton from Pro Boxing Fans, please. Hello, Tommy. How you doing, mate? How you doing? All good. Um, just a quick couple from me. Um, I mentioned, obviously, trainer Neil Fennan. Um, obviously, Luke, Losing Lewis Ritson from the gym recently, he's, he's just gone back to his father. What's that been like, not having Ritson there in the gym for this camp? Um, it's just been obviously just a bit different, but it was the, like the time before Lewis was was there two years ago. You know, I think uh, me and me and Neil went roughly about six, seven months uh, just together. I mean, my brother Martin was in the gym also, but he wasn't fighting at the time. So um, the only fight he had the construct on was, was me. But um, so things have been a little bit different this time around, obviously with the regime of training and stuff everything's just been different because well Neil's only got me so there's only one fighter to work around so just been me and him but things have been good um, I've been enjoying them it's, uh, it's training has went well I'm looking forward to Saturday night Has that made it any easier with Neil there because he's got all of his time focused on just yourself or did you still have the same amount of time beforehand? No Neil, Neil um, I still had the same time beforehand even when Lewis was a he, um Obviously, the things he was doing with me and then Lewis, he'd make sure that we all had a, enough time and enough enough work with the in, individual. But, um, but also, obviously, we used to work, like me and Lewis, we worked together. Some some training regimes used to obviously do it together, but just doing them things by myself now. But um, no, yeah, still still loads there. Still plenty of, plenty of good work. Dan, as your opponent, are you saying you've not seen a lot of him? Neil does all that side of things for yourself. Obviously, we've seen a lot of Mexicans come over in the last 12 months and cause upsets. Your opponent Saturday night, he's beaten five unbeaten fighters. Just how dangerous is he come Saturday night? Very dangerous. Like I said, you know what you get when you fight these Mexicans and some of them more like you said and done some big upsets. So, you know, they come to fight, they come to win and they're there. They're tough, they're strong, the game and the, the will to win. So, you know that you're in for a hard night and uh, that's what I'm expecting on Saturday night. But um, I do believe my class and skill will, was enough to beat anybody. So, as long as I'm right on the night, I think um, I'll get the victory. Last one from me. Obviously, last time out, Thomas Asomba, um and in a draw, obviously, due to a awful cut. Is there any worries getting into this fight that I might open up again, or is there any any worries on your end from that side of things? No, I'd say, um, I've been cut before. It won't be my first, won't be my last. Um, so, it's it's been stitched up, it's been healed, I've been sparring, everything's, everything's gone good, so it's like out of my mind. Um, just, Unfortunate what happened, but you know, it's boxing, boxing is a very unexpected sport, and uh, that's what I think that's why we love it for because it's so unexpected anything can happen. 
But um, no, all fitting well, eyes good and ready to go. Fantastic. Tommy, best of luck, mate. Thank you very much. Okay, we go to Danny Flexon from Seconds Out, please. Hey, Tommy, how you doing, mate? How you doing, all right? Yeah, yeah, good, thank you. Um, the move up for this fight, featherweight, is that going to be a permanent move? Um, you know, we've, we've been talking about moving to featherweight for quite some time since um, since the America fight two years ago. Um, it was me who wanted to stay at Super Bantamweight. Um, me trainer Neil didn't. He wanted me to move to featherweight. Um, but I hung on. I hung on there and I probably hung on a little bit too long. But um, I'm feeling good at featherweight now. So, you know, see what Saturday night brings and um, we'll just take it from there. Like I said, I'll speak to my management team, MTK. Um, see see what's see what's there, and you know, it just depends what kind of fights come up. We'll, we'll see where we go. Well, you had a really good, or still have a really good world ranking at 122. Do you think that will be replicated at featherweight if you make that um, move permanent? Um, it might adjust slightly, might adjust slightly, but I think uh, I think a good good win at, at featherweight will um will put me put me back in good place. So yeah, I think yeah, I think it'll be good and. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously I, I was good ranked with the WBO, um, who Emmanuel Navarrete was a champion at the time at, at 122. He's moved to 126 now, so you know if I uh, get a good ranking there, then maybe maybe that fight can happen. But we're gonna see how it goes. There's also a vacant IBF title fight at featherweight coming up. Um, we haven't got a date yet, but with Kid Galahad's rematch with Jazza Dickens, you've obviously got history with Jazza yourself. Is that a, a winner of that? Is that something you target if you do stay at feather? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously that that's that's a fight there as well that can be made. Um, obviously, I've boxed Dickinson, I've sparred a lot of rounds with Galahad. Um, both really good fighters, it should be a really good fight. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that's another another good fight there for me. Yeah, I mean, if that that opportunity comes up too, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be happy to take it. Great stuff. Well, very best of luck for Saturday, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you back after that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Danny. If you go to Ron Lewis next, please. Hi there, hi there, Tommy. Um, did you feel um, your last fight with the Somber was was kind of um, your, you know your first sort of big fight on main 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 telly in a way? Um, did you feel that was a disappointing night and it didn't go for you? I mean, obviously the end was disappointing, but it wasn't your best performances. No, it was a very bad performance on on my behalf. Um, it was just it was just a very bad night to be honest. Just never turned up to the office, and you know. Uh, and then the clash of heads, it was just, it wasn't very good. And uh, Zumba, you know, my game went down, his game went up and it, it led to being an interesting fight. But, you know, um, on my behalf, it was just a very bad night. Just things just didn't go go right at all. And uh, just couldn't get going on the night. So, you know, but like, it's boxing. It's uh, them times of day, you know, we, we're human beings, we're not machines. You know, we try to get get the time and right to peak on the night. So, you know, you're in full flow. But uh, fortunately, that night just didn't, didn't, didn't go well. Has it been a nervy night for you? Because you've 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 had a lot of fights and a lot of wins, but but you know I remember you fighting over in America in Kansas, wasn't it? And and, and um, you've been in a lot of bills, but you've you've not at, been put in that big title fight yet that you really wanted. No, I mean that's them. Those ones we're looking for. Them's the ones we're chasing down. Um, you know, them's the ones I'm looking forward to to getting and having. So you know, we we'll just keep pushing towards them. What would that ideally be? Because, um, you know, you, you probably still got a couple of fights away from a world title fight. You're hoping to get an eliminator? Hope so, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm leaving everything to, to my management team, MTK. I mean, they they handle all the business on the side of it. And we're training Neil Fannin. Um, you know, they're speaking up. They're, they're making the, the, the roots up, uh, who we've got to fight and how we've got to get there. And for, for me, my main focus is just staying, staying ready, staying fit in the gym, uh, get a good win on Saturday night hopefully and uh, we keep pushing forward and then whoever they put in front of me if it's got to be a final eliminate or something like that we, you know I'm happy to fight um, and so we just take it as it comes Excellent Thanks Tommy Take care mate yeah. Here we go to Steve from Boxing UK next Hi Tommy Long time no see Hey, there Steve right? Hello mate uh, Tommy I know we talked about it last week but um, we said that you were boxing's best kept secret weren't you? Mm. And then your first outing on mainstream TV, um, you said you underperformed. How long did it take you to get over that personally? Um, that, like, it's boxing, not for, you know, not very long. I mean, um, 
it's a game we're in. Anything can happen. I mean, it's uh, it was just a bad night. It was a bad performance. I think it was a good performance on his behalf. Um, it just was what it was, you know. Like I think we talked about before. Um, I, I I believe and I know I'm a better fighter than him, but you know everything comes down to that night and things didn't go right for me on the night. It went right for him, and it, it led to a good fight. It led to an interesting fight, but and shame about the the very bad clash of heads. It was a nasty cut, but you know. It is what it is. We, we, we'll fight it, right? Fight. How much of a difference will a thousand home fans make this weekend, mate? I think it'll make a bit of difference. Um, it's always nice fighting in front of a crowd, you know, just a bit of a cheer, just a bit of normality, back to a bit of normality. And um, I think it'll be really good on Saturday night. I'm looking forward to it. Good man. Last one for me, Tommy. You're fighting a tough Mexican. We've heard that a few times this year and it hasn't gone well. Will it be different <laughs> this weekend for you, mate? I'm sure. Listen. Uh, I know what I'm in for with these Mexicans. They're hard, they're tough, they come to fight. But um, listen, I'm good. I know I'm good. I believe in me, ability, and I believe that I can outbox anybody. Um, so you can be hard as tough as you want, but I believe my skills will show, will show and um, we'll get the victory inside the night. Good man. See you later in the week, Tommy. Take care, mate. Better. Thanks, Steve. If you go to Ames next week. Hi, Thomas. Uh, how's life treating you? Very well. I'm enjoying the bit of sunshine at the minute. It's very nice before the gym session. <laughs> it looks like you are indeed. All right. So um, I want to talk to you about you've had in your career the, the cuts in uh, the area um, in your fights and that having reopened in your last fight. Is that a conscious thought for you coming into the ring this weekend? No, it was um, it was a fresh cut. It wasn't it wasn't the same one. I mean, I got okay. a bat against um, Jazzy Dickerson that actually come down the eye. Mm-hmm. Um. I forget how many stitches I got. I've got, got quite a few, but the one against the Zumba, it was the same eye, but it was slightly different. It was like a jagged cut, um, which was a very nasty cut. Obviously, the eyebrow was hanging down, but um, as far as I'm concerned, the doctor stitches up. Uh, they know what they do. So I think it's healed well. I've sparred. Um, you know, it's been six, seven months, I think, ago, so I have, I have no issues with it. No, I mean, um, I think it should be fine. So, like I said, it's not my first cut. I don't think it'll be my last, so you know, it is what it is. From a boxing perspective, is there anything you've looked at uh, as a way to adapt your boxing to lessen the possibility of a cut reopening in the future? You know, well, you know, when they go off cuts, obviously, it's just, it's a clash of heads. I've never, I've never I think I've been cut once off a punch uh, early mm. in my career. It was only like one or two stitches. It was nothing. Um, the cuts I've had has been off, been off bad clashes of heads and self be the orthodox. So, when you get yourself to be off, so you, you do get clash heads type of thing. But unfortunately, I've, I've come out the worst of, of the two. And I've, mm-hmm. I've suffered two nasty cuts. But I don't think it's um, it's one of them things that happen. I mean, obviously, you, you, you're boxing. You you do try to adapt a lot of things to try to protect yourself a little bit more. But I think um, in in the boxing, if they come together, they come together, you know, there's nothing really much you can do about it. Mm-hmm. I read on your Instagram, you said that last year was a bad year for you. And... There was at times where you'd you know fallen out of love with the support. Have you got that love back? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, going into my last fight, like I was speaking to Neil, that the, um, the the full year which was just a bad bad year. Even even before April, before I got put back, it wasn't you know th- you know things wasn't wasn't great then and either. But you know that's just it's just life. Sometimes sometimes life's good, sometimes life's bad. It's just it's the way it is. And then. Um, unfortunately, just things wasn't wasn't too good all last year. And then um, even before the fight, obviously I was supposed to fight. Um, a Mexican, I think it was again. Um, I was up, I was up for, I was looking forward to it, but then when when that fell through and couldn't get a replacement, and then there was a Zumba. I was like, you know, it was it was pointless. It was a pointless fight. And I think my last three or four fights has been like, it's been pointless. A box just for the sake of boxing, really. And obviously, I need to be active. I need to be out. But you know, I want I want something worthwhile going for. And you know, I've never had that in the last few fights. So I believe if we get a good win on Saturday night, then something big will come for me. With that said about things being pointless um, in the past, what does this fight at the weekend represent for you? It's going to establish myself back at the the featherweight scene. You know, I think uh, if we get a good good win on Saturday night, um, it'll put me put me in a good position and hopefully we'll get a good ranking and then we'll um, we'll push on, hopefully get a final eliminator or, you know, something like that. I mean, Dickinson and the Galahad's fighting for the IVF. Um, you know, so there's, there's, there's plenty of good fights out, out, out for me. But So we'll see how it goes, yeah. Uh, you've been open and honest about saying that your last performance wasn't a good performance from your perspective. Do you have to come into the ring and win in impressive fashion this weekend? 
Well, it's like like I said about you know we're human beings when we're not machines. It's we, we do try and peak right, and I mean at the minute I'm feeling great, so I do believe I'll, I'll turn up and put on a good performance. But um, it was just it was one of them things last time around it didn't go well. I think things were just bad and just a very bad performance. But um, I do believe on Saturday night you're going to see a very different and better Tommy Ward. Wish all the best at the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Tommy, really appreciate your time, mate. Um, we'll see you later on for the press conference, right, mate? Thank you. See you later on. Take care, mate. Bye-bye.